Just to sort of carry a little bit of Gary's thought, uh, uh, I asked Yusuf once, uh, more than once in our conversations, um, how, what motivated him to get involved in what's now called world music and start using, uh, uh, studying scales and using instruments from different parts of the world. This was in the mid, mid and early 50s, right? And he told me, he said uh, that he knew if he wanted to have a long term relationship with music, that he wanted to find out everything he possibly could about every kind of music. And I think that's one of the beautiful, one of the many beautiful characteristics of Yusuf and where he sort of has shined a light for many, many of us is the idea of uh, part of being an artist is being studious. Mm -hmm. He often said to me, he said, well, Brother Adam, we're evolutionists. You know, he considered Eric Dolphy an evolutionist, John Coltrane an evolutionist, and that implies a certain kind of studiousness. So uh, Benny Maupin once told me when Eric Dolphy or Coltrane would go to Detroit, uh, the first thing they would do would look for Yusuf to find out what what he was doing, and he was always they'd find him in the library. He was the one who was looking, who introduced uh, a lot of the musicians to the Schillinger's concepts of composition, and uh, 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 um, a lot of contemporary classical processes, and at the same time looking at musics from all over the world. So this kind of spirit of investigation and the humility that goes with uh, being uh, studious is really important and has a huge impact on me and probably I'm guessing all of us and many many people so Yusuf uh, in that spirit I know that he went and he lived in West Africa Nigeria uh, in Zaria for four years where he did research on the Fulani flute and also did a lot of collaborative musical projects uh, he actually there was a, a pretty significant book about the Sawera the, the Fulani, Fulani flute that he wrote uh, when he came back, uh, from what he told me later, uh, I met him a, within a couple of years after that. Um, he wasn't really interested in having a quote-unquote band, bass, drums, piano, and gigging around this kind of thing. He was looking for something else. He heard some recordings through uh, that I uh, of a group I was involved with, with musicians from Detroit, Charles Moore and Ralph Jones, and also Federico Ramos called Eternal Wind. And um, he was kind of fascinated with, with, with what we did. And he invited us to participate in a concert he was doing in 1988 at Symphony Space. Uh, and it was maybe his first New York appearance in 10 years, something like that. Cecil McBee played with us also. And the beauty of that, uh, of the reason I want to mention that concert in particular was that set the tone for a lot of my relationship with Yusuf in the 25 years following. He asked me to bring in some compositions to that concert, which was a generous move that he didn't have to do. But he always respected not only what I did as a percussionist and was interested in it and asked me about it, but also what I did as a composer. In the spirit of innovation, for uh, also I'll just tell one other quick story and then move on. But in around the early 90s, he was commissioned uh, to do a large ensemble piece which he had entitled The World at Peace and he asked me to be his co-composer so uh, I, which of course it was an honor for me it was a uh, we did it for 12 musicians what's interesting about it is that uh, and in the spirit of Yusuf always having no fear and courage to try new things which I think is also a lesson that I hold dear the courage to follow your your intuition so we both wrote some pieces separately, but then he said, okay, Brother Adam, I'd like um, you you to write uh, about a four, I think it was three or four pieces for half of the ensemble, and I'm going to write three or four pieces for half of the ensemble. Then you tell me which instruments you wrote for, how many bars you wrote, and the approximate tempo. I'm going to write for the other six instruments, and but we're not going to hear, and then you do the same. You write three pieces for six instruments. Tell me the in what instruments you wrote for, how many bars you wrote, and the approximate tempo. And I'm going to write for the other six instruments. And we're not going to hear them all put together till we get together in rehearsal. Mm. And I have to tell you, uh, mm -hmm. all but one of the pieces worked out 
in some kind of incredible way that could never have happened otherwise. I think only the surrealists have done this in their visual arts before. Um, and it was one, actually subsequent to that, we did many sort of innovative where we wrote alternating other projects where we wrote alternating groups of bar lines, but it brought something so fresh and unexpected to the palette. Uh, Yusuf said to me, I think he made over 70, 80 records. I don't know. He said, with every recording, I want to do something that I've never done before. And this was an example of the kind of uh, ways you could invent new processes endlessly. And of course, a great honor for me to be involved in that.